This module is about D3's general update pattern. This pattern lets us write a render function that can be invoked over and over again with different data, synchronizing the DOM to the data elements that enter, exit, and update. We begin with this example that just uses enter and update. Similarly to examples from the previous module, we have an empty SVG element, we have a data array, we create a data join, set the CX and fill attributes on the update selection, use the enter selection to append new circles, and define the CX, CY, R, and fill attributes of the newly appended circles. What we'd ultimately like to do is make a render function that executes logic like this. But the render function should always make sure that the DOM elements match up with the data that was passed into the function. Our first step towards this is to introduce a render function. Here we've introduced a new function called render that takes a single argument data. Inside the render function we have the exact same code as the previous example. Here we're invoking the render function with this array of data. This array that we pass in here can be referred to as data, the argument to the render function. This invocation of the render function only triggers the enter selection. That's why all the circles are green. We can invoke this render function multiple times. The second time we invoke the render function, the first two circles get repositioned and they become orange because they're part of the update selection. Because we're passing in one more data element than we had before, one new circle gets appended on the enter selection. So far so good, but what happens if we invoke the render function once with some data and then again with no data? On the first invocation, three new circles get added. On the second invocation, the three circles are still there. This is problematic because what we want the render function to really do is to make sure that after it gets executed, the state of the DOM is purely a function of the data passed into the render function and doesn't depend at all on the previous state of the DOM. This is the case for the exit selection. On the data join returned by dot data, there is a method called enter. There's also another method called exit. We'd like to use enter and exit at the same time. So to do that, we need to take the data join returned by dot data and assign it into a variable. In this example, the data join returned by dot data is assigned to the circles variable. Here we're using the circles variable to invoke enter. We still haven't handled the exit case, but now that we have the data join as a variable, we can call circles.exit. In the next example, we're invoking circles.exit and then setting the fill attribute of all of the DOM elements in the exit selection to be read. The exit method of a data join returns a new selection that contains only the DOM elements for which there are no matching data elements. In this case, since there were three circle elements before, and then we pass in a data array that's empty, all three of these circles are in the exit selection. But, for example, if we had one data element in the new array, the exit selection would only contain the last two circles, and the update selection would apply to the first circle. Similarly, if we pass two data elements to the second invocation of the render function, the exit selection will contain only the last circle. And lastly, if we pass three data elements into the second invocation of the render function, then the exit selection is empty. So far what we're doing is we're just coloring the circles in the exit selection red. But what we really should be doing is removing them. D3 selections have another method that's useful to us here called remove. When you invoke remove on a selection, all of its DOM elements get removed from the page. Now, no matter how many data elements we pass into the second invocation of the render function, there will always be the same number of circles in the DOM as there are data elements passed in. This is the essence of the general update pattern. The overall effect of the general update pattern is that the state of the DOM only depends on the data array that was last passed into the render function. Changing data values in invocations of the render function that are anything other than the last invocation doesn't have any effect.
Now the render function is doing its job properly. But there is a slight problem here, and that is the problem of duplicated logic. Notice that we're assigning the CX attribute in the update selection, and we're also assigning the CX attribute in the same way in the enter selection. We actually need both of these. If we don't set CX in the update selection, then the CX values for the first three circles are being derived from the first invocation of the render function, not the second. So we need to assign CX in the update selection. We also need to assign CX in the enter selection, because if we don't, then the newly appended circles won't have any CX value defined. So we need to set CX in both the enter selection and the update selection. But ideally, it shouldn't appear two places in the code. This is the case for using merge. Here, we're invoking the merge method on the enter selection, and we're passing in the update selection. The selection returned by the merge method contains the data elements and DOM elements from both the enter selection and the update selection. So we can just apply the CX attribute here, and we can be sure that it will be applied to all the circles, regardless of whether they were newly added or whether they were there before. This is really the complete general update pattern. These three invocations here test all the various cases of the general update pattern. This first invocation tests entering data elements. The second invocation tests entering and updating data elements. The last data element here has entered, and the first three have updated. This last invocation tests exiting data elements. All four of these data elements have exited, so all of the DOM elements have been removed. This is the essence of the general update pattern. Here's an exercise for you. What we have here is a render function that creates rectangles. The problem with it is that it only uses the enter selection. Your task is to modify the code inside this function to use the general update pattern. These invocations below test the various cases. This last invocation should leave you with four evenly spaced rectangles. So that's when you'll know you've got it. Good luck. This module is about special cases of the general update pattern that come in handy sometimes. One of them is using classes to isolate the DOM elements that you want to manage. And the other special case is managing one single thing using the general update pattern. Let's say we have a website or visualization that has a big red circle in the background as like a logo or something. We want to write our code such that this circle will stay there and our circles won't interfere with this circle. Here's what happens if we apply the general update pattern just like before in this scenario. The background circle is defined here in the HTML. When we say select all circle here within the SVG, the resulting selection actually contains this circle, but we don't want it to. Down below in this example, we're calling the render function multiple times just like before. Notice how the background circle ends up getting manipulated by the first data value here. We can avoid this behavior by using classes. In this example, our general update pattern code uses select all dot point instead of select all circle. Recall that the dot prefix causes the selection to match against classes. When we append the new circle in the enter selection, we give it a class of point so that it will be picked up next time around by the update selection. Notice that now the circles that we're managing are independent of the background circle. This is how you can use classes. This is how you can use classes to isolate the DOM elements that your code manipulates from other elements on the page with the same tag name. Another useful and common special case of the general update pattern is managing a single thing. In this example, we're appending the SVG element inside the render function. Our goal here is to have the render function manage the SVG element, rather than just using one that's on the body. 
What we have here is not quite right though, because every time we invoke the render function, a new SVG element is being added to the page. If we decrease the size of the SVG elements here, we can see that there's multiple SVG elements on the page. In order to just append a new SVG element on the first render and on subsequent renders use the existing SVG element, we can use the general update pattern. Here we're using the general update pattern to manage a single SVG element. When we create the data join, the data that we're using is an array that has a single element in it. The specific value of this single element doesn't really matter. It could be anything like one, or true, or an empty object. But I'm using null here because I've seen it used like this in the D3 source code for the axis module. Because we're creating a data join on a data array with a single element, we can use the enter selection to append a new SVG element and give it a width and height only on the first invocation of the render function. Then we merge together the enter and update selections, and then reassign the value of the SVG variable to be that merged selection. This way, we can refer to the SVG variable later on when appending our circles, and we can be sure that it's our one single SVG element, no matter if it's the first invocation of the render function or subsequent invocations. Down below in this example, we can see that the circles are being driven by the last invocation of the render function, not the first. So this is how we know it's working correctly. Also, if we inspect the DOM here, we can see that even after multiple invocations of the render function, there's just a single SVG on the page. This is how we can use the general update pattern to manage a single thing on the page. Since this pattern is so common, you might see a more compact variation of it. This is a variation of the previous example that just occupies four lines of code. You might see code like this in the wild. We're creating the data join just like before, but in the next step, we're inverting the order in which the selections get merged. Here we're calling merge on the update selection rather than the enter selection. Then, as the argument to merge, we're creating the enter selection. This example shows that the order of merge doesn't matter. You can call merge on the update selection and pass it the enter selection, or you can call merge on the enter selection and pass it the update selection. The resulting merged selection will be the same. This is how you can use the general update pattern to manage a single DOM element in a more compact way. Here's an exercise for you. Your task is to modify the code for rendering circles to be more compact. The examples in this first unit have been intentionally verbose, occupying more lines of code than they need to for the sake of readability and clarity. But when you start using D3 in more real projects, you'll start to face a balancing act of compactness versus readability. The more familiar you get with D3, the more easy it becomes to read the compact variations. So play around a little bit with the balances and the trade-offs in what you can put onto each individual line of code. Good luck!